Hello there, this is Lynn and this is the table that we are going to create today. We're going to do a high gloss finish on all of the legs and the skirt and then I'm going to teach you how to do a, an acrylic pour over the top to create a super cool marble effect. So what I'm going to be doing today is um, I have this table that it was actually purchased as a bedside table and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later um, from sort of the French country um, air that I am over at this point and we're gonna make it um, glossy and I learned a technique at a workshop last um, last weekend that um, wasn't originally part of this project but we're gonna throw it in there we're gonna see what it ends up being um, it's this acrylic pour method um, we're gonna put that onto the surface of this table so I hope you join me because I think it's gonna be fun and um, I think it's something that you can take into a lot of different projects and use for yourself so here's a quick preview of the technique that I learned that I'm gonna be putting on top I'm just gonna be um, changing up the colors uh, lots of sparkle, lots of shine, and then a nice solid teal on the bottom. Okay, as you can see behind me, I've already got the first coat of paint on here. And that's the fun part, but there's some very not fun things that I did before I got to this point that are critically important. So I wanted to just take a minute and walk you through those steps because um, preparation is the key to making anything like this work. Most pieces of furniture can be adequately prepped with just some denatured alcohol, um, but you want to be generous with the application of it. If you have had any kind of furniture polish like Pledge or anything like that sprayed on it, you might want to get a little bit more aggressive. Um, but first, if you just saturate a cloth with denatured alcohol and wipe it down really good, every single crack, every single crevice, um, just kind of dig in there and get it all cleaned out. Um, that could be all the prep that you need. The piece of furniture is going to feel a little bit dry after that, and that's good. That's what you want. That's going to make it really grab a hold to the paint. If you still see some stickiness after using the denatured alcohol, you want to um, go to something a little bit stronger. And what I use is TSP. It's what I use to clean cabinets before painting cabinets because we are using a cabinet paint here. This particular table had a really low sheen finish to start with, so it didn't require any sanding. And the only place that I primed on this table was just the top surface because I needed um, a really chalky surface to be able to um, do the paint pour technique that we're doing on top. I found that using a Chinex brush from Wooster gives me the best results with this particular paint. Benjamin Moore's Advanced High Gloss Paint is the paint that I choose for any kind of interior project that's going to be in a bedroom because I don't get off gassing and I get a super high gloss finish. So now the legs and the sides and all the edges and all the cracks and crevices are painted with Benjamin Moore's High Gloss Advance in Tropical Teal number 714. And now I've just put a quick coat of primer across the top because I want a good surface for our paint pour to grab to. If the piece of furniture had been higher gloss to start with, um, I would have primed it with the grip and seal before I um, painted the first coat of advance on. But since this one was so nice and chalky to start with, I didn't need to do that. So we're just going to mask off the sides and the legs and do our pour. I prime the top so that we can get a really good grab on the surface and I used Grip and Seal which is a Coronado product which you can get at any Benjamin Moore store. And we're going to let that dry for about two hours and then we're going to do the really fun part of this project. How do we do this? So the first thing that you need is this stuff called Floetrol. And I already had this because um, it's a great paint additive. Um, a couple times I'd been in on a job and they had purchased, um, I'm kind of a paint snob, 
and I like good quality paint because I know I don't get brush marks and roller marks and all those kinds of things. Um, so this you can add to a lower quality paint or an older can of paint. Um, you just add a little bit and stir it into it and it kind of brings it back to life. So that's what we're going to be using as our base. And then we have all these little cups. I put about half a cup of, of our Floetrol into each of these cups. I'm going to be doing five different colors. So I have six cups, five cups with the Floetrol. And then I have an empty cup, which is where we're going to layer the colors, which we, when we pour them on. So I was surprised at how little paint you actually needed, which is why, sorry, um, why this is such a great project if you already have a bunch of these little craft bottles. But one of the things we found in the workshop that worked really well were the metallics. And the metallics that I used are actually, they're from Modern Masters and they're they're higher end, more expensive metallics. Um, I mean, they're so good. I can go out and, and paint my light fixtures outside. And uh, we have one outside that we painted like seven years ago. It still looks brand new. But um, you can use the same little metallics that come in um, in these craft, in these little tiny craft things. And you know, these only cost like a dollar or two a piece. So the Floetrol itself, I think you can find it on Amazon for about eight bucks. You can find it in your local hardware store. I'm guessing like your big box store has it. Um, and then these little crafty guys just takes one big squirt right there. And then you want to mix it. You can see I mixed my green on the other end here. You want to just mix it really well. It takes a minute to, to get it incorporated. The more pigment that's in the paint, the more that you have to, to mix it. So your darker colors are going to take a little bit longer to mix. Um, I found that my the metallics that I was using, they didn't completely saturate. And I know one of the reasons is because there's a lot of mica powder in there, um, which is what gives it that sheen. You want to just make sure you get it all the way all the way mixed in there and then what we're going to start to do is we're layering these dark to light so my lightest color is this this pale pale sort of um it's a little bit more green than sea foamy and then my next color is going to be a metallic then we have the aqua that we just mixed. Then I have a darker green. And then I have kind of a, an antique bronze. I actually wanted a bright gold, but I grabbed my bright gold and it was all dried up. So what we're gonna do, and I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna get started on this, um, on this process. Like I said, we're gonna go lightest to no we're gonna go darkest to lightest because that's what I found that I liked the best when I did um, my other project so we're just gonna pour a little bit in here and then what you want to do is you want to pour right in the middle my flow trawl seems a lot thinner than the one that we used maybe it was just that particular metallic Oh, there's some cool things going on on the top of this. Okay, and so I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna keep layering and layering as I pour. And then once I have it all ready to go on the piece, I'll, I'll, I'll bring you back in. The entire surface is covered, so I'm going to wipe down the legs and let it dry for about 12 hours. And now we have this gorgeous table that 
If you want to do a poly on top, you can. If you want to put a piece of glass on top, that's what I recommend, um, which is fun because you can stick pictures underneath it. The legs are super high glossy. And now we have something that really makes a statement and brings color into a space where there was none. So I hope you enjoyed this. I really loved creating this. I'm always looking for ways to help you bring more personality to your space and use things that you already have and save you time, save you money, and just make life a little bit easier and a lot more fun. So come join me on lynnneehouse.com where I'm always giving you ideas for making your room more personal, um, or using things that you already have or just being better organized. You can join one of my free mini design camps and learn the secrets to creating a great bedroom design. I believe that every girl deserves a bedroom of her dreams. Girls big and girls small. So join me there and I will show you how.